Hey, guys and gals, I'm pal, and welcome to Okami. In the last episode, and I lost the tune because it's really quiet because I can't hear it loudly because unless you guys would then hear the echo of it. <laughs> hey guys and gals, I'm Pal and welcome back to Okami. Last episode, we rescued Ume from the jaws of the legendary fish Whopper, who has been inhabiting the deep abyss for quite some time. After quote unquote defeating Whopper, we gained the ability Moonrise, which is, allows us to be able to turn night into day at any time we please. And since we already had sunrise, we can now control day and night at our leisure. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, uh, which means I no longer have to wait until nighttime for specific events, or I don't have to wait till nighttime in order to find certain chests in the game. I can just draw something on the sky, con uh, assuming I'm inside, and turn it to nighttime and instantly see what I'm looking for. Or, in the case of nighttime, if people aren't out who should be out because I need to talk to them, I can simply turn it into day and then talk to them. Such is the case here, because Kokari isn't out here at night. And while I go ahead and uh, take him up on his offer, thank you, thank you so much. I couldn't have done it without you. What offer am I referring to? Well, you'll see. I've been itching for a bigger challenge since I caught Whopper. Someday, I want to sail the seas and catch even bigger fish. After all, a man's not a man without an adventure. Well, time to hone my fishing skills. How about some fishing? Sure, why not? And while I take part in this wonderful sport, wonderful activity, I love fishing in real life, it's fun. Um, I'm going to explain something, and what I want to explain is the reference that the fi- uh, not fish, that the rabbit deity was. Uh, last episode, in case you didn't watch it, uh, the deity that gave us Moonrise was a rabbit. And what's more, this rabbit was pounding some sort of white ball of some sort, and uh, a Matarasu is trying to snitch pieces of it to eat. That's what it looked like. But that's not actually what it was. Um, we as Americans, whenever we see the moon, we, we tend to see a uh, face outlined in the craters of the moon. Same with uh, Europeans, we, they tend to see that as well. In most of the fairy tales you see that involve the moon, you'll see a face drawn on it. However, when the Japanese look at the moon, they don't see a face, they see the distinct outline of a rabbit. And what's more, this rabbit isn't just sitting there idly. It's wielding a wooden mallet, pounding uh, rice into a paste called mochi, which is used in Japan to make sort of like a, a dessert snack thing. It actually looks very, very delicious. Um, they pound the paste into, they pound the rice into paste, and then solidify the paste by letting it dry and then they can make it into various shapes and then eat it. It actually looks quite good. I actually, whenever I'm making anything involving rice, I will eat the raw rice, so I can picture that being a very delicious thing. In fact, I might make it sometime, I don't know. And uh, so, that's what they see. But in the game, when we saw that, there's something that was kind of unexplained for us. Uh, Amaterasu's paw gestures in that scene. When we saw that, you know, just by uh, your casual eye, you might think that a Matarasu is trying to snitch a piece of it. Like, you know, when, you're, when your mother's making cookies in the kitchen, which sounds very stereotypical, and you try to take some of the cookie dough because it tastes good. That's what it looked like. But actually, a Matarasu is helping the moon god. And I, I guess I should explain this by talking about the process in which you make mochi. In the older days, when they didn't use machines to make it, um, mochi was a two, required two people. One person to pound the rice into paste with the mallet, but the, and then another person to knead the lump in between strikes, making it so it wasn't just turned into pretty much a pancake, so it could continually be crushed. So, that's what Matarasu was doing. Matarasu was kneading the lump of rice 
while in between the strikes of the rabbit. And as for when uh, the rabbit tried to hit Amaterasu, that could be explained in two ways, and this is just conjecture at this point. None of my research into this uh, explained why the uh, moon deity might do that, but I have a couple of explanations of my own also. That's a very pretty fish. Um, one of which is when it... Ah, <laughs> my, my stuttering because I'm trying to concentrate on fishing. That shows that this is not post-commentated. Um, so, here's, here's one of the possible two explanations. Whenever you make mochi, it's kind of a little bit of a dangerous job. Also, salmon, wow. It's a little bit of a dangerous job, because if you get your rhythm wrong, you know, the person uh, hammering it could possibly hammer your fingers into the mochi. And believe you me, blood in whatever you're making is not the most appetizing thing. Unless you're with a group of guys, then they'll happily eat it. But if you're with any other group, you know, blood in whatever you're eating is not appreciated. So it could be uh, that Amaterasu kind of fouled up... Also, I cut that tree in the background. Kind of fouled up the uh, the rhythm, thus making it so she was almost hit. Although, that's just... That's kind of your, uh, your practical explanation. That just makes sense. Here's mine. My personal explanation. Uh, whenever you hear a lot of, you know, fairy tales and stories, it's of... Um, the, the sun and moon fighting, you know, they're never in the sky at the same time, which means, you know, they must have had some disagreement to make it so they're both busy only half the day. That's, you know, that's some of what the ancient uh, f philosophers or story writes thought, or at least they wrote about. So for the moon god to try to take a swing at Ami, it, it makes sense because there's a rivalry between the two. So that's that's kind of my explanation. It's it's kind of a good possible explanation. All right, with that out of the way, and with this fish caught, which I believe I just showed up off all of the fish that it's possible to catch in this area. I'm not trying to 100% this because this is not this does not contribute towards 100% completion. Uh, I'll catch one more fish. I'll go for another big one just because I want to make sure that. I'm able to uh, to buy the Infinity Judge, so I'm going to take a swing at this one. Alright, so... Should I cut? No, I won't cut. I know we're going on like seven minutes here, but I feel like I, I should show this, because it's fun. This fishing is actually very fun. It's good for reflexes, because he constantly switches directions, and you have to keep up with him and get him close. There we go. That was good. That was really good. And... Good. Come on. Turn me closer. And it's another big guy. Oh, I, I can't believe I hit him. Nice. Okay, let me get him close again. Okay, come on, buddy. Come on. One more pass. One more pass. Come on, buddy. Come on. You can do it. Okay, reel him in. I, I kind of am surprised that... Actually, no, that, does, that makes sense. I was going to say, why don't they actually use fishing poles? But they didn't exist at the time. So they have to use the fishing rods. Although, Kokari is very good at this. Although, he kind of ties his life force into this fishing rod. You can see on the bottom he has HP. Which makes me think that this is like the... Like Tien's tri-beam of, uh, of fishing poles. Uh, uh, I, I have to throw in the Dragon Ball Z references every now and then. I'm watching through it with uh, Nova. And so, you know, I have to throw them in. Because that's what I'm watching a lot of. Okay, continue fishing. No, I'm done. <laughs> I got so excited I forgot everything else. You're right, we gotta get back to business. Now that's a big one. Now that now I know why people get hooked on fishing. Oh Kokar, you dirty dog, you made a pun. Oh my word, boy, you made a pun. So why do you have a rabbit on your head? I don't know. Uh before we leave for Kamiki Village, I'm going to go ahead and feed Ume, because we get ten praise from that and if you look at my stuff, I have a lot of praise. I'm almost ready to upgrade stuff. I don't know, maybe by the end of this video I will. So let's go ahead and feed Ume. Uh, get some meat, and skip right past this, and while that happens, I'll shut my window. <laughs> Once again, me breaking the fourth wall to what's going on outside of the game. It, I'm not sure if you guys could hear it, but kind of faintly in the background... Oh, there, there it was again. Kind of in the background were uh, some gunshots. Yeah, um, I live next to, you could call it a private shooting range, and I want to go this way. So, yeah, gunshots near my house are not uncommon. 
I have the windows open a lot of the time, so yeah, gunshots a couple times have gotten on recording, which I kind of hope that some of you guys have heard because I don't know what you guys, what conclusions you might have come to. It is not a very common thing to hear gunshots in the background of a recording. I don't know. I did. Whoa, this place is really red. Whoa, looks like we're going through like the insides of somebody, like a blood vessel that's dried up, which is gross. That's weird. That's cool weird. That's really weird. Also, a cloud is phasing through the rock. That's really cool. I just have to take a moment. That is beautiful. Look at that. I didn't even know this existed. That's gorgeous. Huh. Huh. That's really cool. I guess it is evening, so that makes sense. Oh, and Kushi, you actually made it this far. Wow. Heave ho! Heave ho! Phew, still got a way to go. It's taken ages just to get this far. How do you carry that this far? And how are you going to carry it back the rest of the way to the village? Don't worry about that. I might not look it, but I'm quite tough. It's not about toughness, it's about strengthness. Bring sake is my life. If I can't manage on my own, where will I be? Wow, I underestimated you. I'll keep my mouth shut from now on. Well, thanks for coming to see me anyway. Here's a little something for your trouble. And what she gives us for our trouble of coming to visit her and not actually help her is a holy bonel. Amaterasu's favorite sm snack. Completely restores solar energy. This will restore all of our health. Super nice. You know, uh, holy bonesses? Those stand for small. Holy bonams? Medium. Holy bonel? Nah, bro. Those don't stand for large. Those are legendary. They are truly magnificent. Truly, truly. Hopefully someone gets that reference because I barely get it myself. It's a it's a League of Legends reference, which I've never played League. I just never really find the time to. I don't even have it. It's just that I never find the time to download it, so yeah. Uh, I actually want it to be daytime. Daytime. Alright, let's go ahead and go into Kamiki to find the last K9 warrior. Here we are, Kamiki. Looks the same as always, as, and I mean always as since we, uh, res restored everything and got the, the bloom going on. The, the blood, the blossoms, blossoms. Whoa, the K9 tracker suddenly appeared. So that means... I don't know. Maybe it means something unique for the fact that the past seven times it's meant the same thing, and that is a canine warrior. I don't know why Isun's so surprised. Yeah, it makes no sense. How long are you just are you planning just sit there? You remind me of a certain statue I saw somewhere. Is that the canine tracker? Have you come to take me back to my master? You hear that, Ami? You must be on an errand from Princess Fuse if you bear that. But I shall not move from here, for the festival will begin soon. Canine Warrior. Chew. You gotta be kidding me. You're on the Saitomi Canine Warriors? And you're ignoring the Princess's summons to wait for the festival? Come back here tonight. We need to have a man to man talk. Man to man talk? Don't you mean dog to wolf? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're try maybe the designers are trying to tell us that maybe he's like reincarnated from a human or something, but I don't know. Uh, hello, woman. Power sign. There you go. Just for old time's sake. Now, uh, while we head up here, because I'm going kind of, I'm not going to wait for night to pass because we have the magical powers of Moonrise, but I want to go up here because it's been a while since we were at the uh, Konohana tree, and so I want to nab a guardian fruit that is on its branches. There it is. Now, while we, uh, while I kind of wait here, I kind of want to tell you guys about a failed take. Not a failed take of this episode, rather, but of three episodes ago. If you remember, uh, about four episodes ago, at the en end of the episode, four episodes ago, I believe it's four episodes, I had mentioned how, um, the next time or on the next episode, in I mentioned in the outro, that we'd be going to Kamiki Village to find the next Canine Warrior, because we'd been here, uh, we hadn't been here in the most amount of time as compared to Agta Forest. Now, if you remember the episode after that, I had mentioned how 
I actually want to go to uh, Sasa Sanctuary because that's what the designers wanted. Now, the reason why I knew that's what the designers wanted is not because I looked up a guide, because I tried to keep myself fairly guide-free here, just, just as a matter of principle. But what I did is that episode actually was a second take, because the first take, I had actually gone to quote-unquote Kamiki first. Well, actually, I didn't go to Kamiki, in all honesty. I was going to go to Kamiki first, but I ended up going to Ogta Forest, because that was in between, you know, Kamiki and, uh, so and Kusa Village. So I decided to go to Ogata Forest first. And Ko Ko Kokari was there, and he mentioned how Ume was missing, and something about Whopper and the Deep Abyss. And he also mentioned that the woman, aka Kushi, at Hitoshio Spring was there. And that all worked just like it should have. But then when I went to go see Kushi, I talked to her, she said everything she should have. But you weren't able to, uh, to put the water in her barrel because you didn't have water spout, and thus the cutscene to Susano didn't activate. And thus, even further, Kokari didn't scream in terror because he saw that Whopper had Ume in its mouth. So you weren't able to, I wasn't actually able to rescue Ume from the jaws of Whopper. And so I was kind. I stumbled around for most of the episode because I wasn't really sure. I, I try to keep. I'm actually kind of playing this game a little bit blind because it has been a long time since I've played this game. So you know, I'm a tiny bit blind in that aspect. So I kind of stumbled around for most of the episode, cutting every which way because I didn't know where to go. I was trying out different things until finally, I, as a, an apology to you guys, even though you guys never really saw the episode, I decided to go here. And I did. And everything worked just like it should have, with one exception. Uh, you know how Hayabusa wanted us to come back at night? Well, obviously, since I didn't have Moonrise, because I didn't catch Whopper, uh, I w had to actually wait until night. But Hayabusa was, quote-unquote, obtainable. So, I just wanted to uh, tell you guys that so you guys knew the order of which things should occur, and that is Sasa Sanctuary slash the Cutter House to Akuta Forest, to Kamiki. That's what the order, uh, that's the order the designers intended. I just wanted to share that with you guys because frequently in my LPs, I mention, you know, the fact about, I met, I kind of wonder, what would happen if I did this before this? You know, in my Scoured Sword Glitches video, I'd mentioned, what would happen if you sequence break, breaked, broke, sequence broke this far, what would actually activate and what wouldn't? Who would you be able to talk to and what would they say? And, you know, frequently I wonder about that, and frequently I'll put it up to you guys. I'll say, you know, if you guys have the time, since I obviously don't, uh, tell me what happens. But this time, there was no need for that. I actually experimented unintentionally on my own. So I just want to share that with you guys, so, you know, you guys know every, kind of what happens if you sequence break. So, you know, I can share with you guys what I wanted you to share with me. So, yeah, uh, I think that's about it uh, for my explanation on the failed take. So with that out of the way, every time we uh, sprout a, or bloom, a guardian sapling, uh, ku uh, Kaguya, uh, Kaguya? No, not Kaguya. Who's Kaguya? Sakuya will have something to say. And this time is no exception. Let's go ahead and talk to Sakuya. Kaguya. Who's that? Great, great o mother Okami Amaterasu. Hey, she mentioned two of my favorite games, Mother and Okami. Nice. The condition of the village tells me that the festival is drawing near. I worry that this year's festival may bring with it bad tidings. A great darkness casts its shadow over our lands. Even I am not fully aware of all that transpires in the darkness. It seems that a tremendously evil force li lies in wait for us all. It is all I can do to remain here and hope against hope. May the fresh scent of flowers protect you always. What bleak and ominous tidings. <laughs> Suddenly I turn Old English and have all the words. <laughs> use all the words. Yeah, I'm going through an English class, so if I use some adjectives, adverbs, nouns, pronouns, um, adverbs, verbs, that are particularly colorful or shall I say crystalline, uh, that's why. I'm going through an English class in my yeah, last year of high school, so I'm really happy about that. Also, 
Something just crashed in the background. Somewhere, something in this room. Hopefully, a burglar isn't in here. And if there is, just wait till the end of the episode before you do me in. All right, let's go ahead and finish off this uh, dusk into <laughs> nighttime. Please work, work, game, game. Let's try it the other way. <sighs> game. I don't know why sometimes uh, Moonrise doesn't work. It it tends to happen a lot. There we are. Huh. Sometimes going to first wolf view is the answer to all of your brush technique problems. So, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and start this off. I assume he'll want to fight just like Ume, Ume did. Let's see. But before that happens, am I properly prepared? Uh, that's a good question. Uh... I have Traveler's Charm, I have the thing, the bid, 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 bid. Uh, I think I'm good, although, actually, this is a good, a good idea. I did mention how I'd like to upgrade my Divine Attributes, so I'm going to be doing that now. I know it's kind of weird for me to be doing this in the middle of a video, but I feel like this will give me a good edge on this battle, since this will be the hardest Canine Warrior battle yet, since, th since we are doing this in the order the designers intended. So... You know, the consecutive battles are, are always the harder ones. So, let's go and upgrade our ink. And instead of upgrading our uh, solar energy, I'd like to upgrade my ink yet again. I think I'm good for ink for a good long time. And now I can start focusing on probably health and uh, my purse. <laughs> purse always makes me laugh. So yeah, I'll probably need, you know, 190 praise. Uh, sorry, 200 and 90 praise before I can upgrade things again. So it'll be a good long time before we can do that. All right, let's go ahead and talk to Hayabusa now that we're properly prepared. You bear the canine tracker, so you must know what it decrees. Men settle their differences at night, man to man, fist to fist. Man to man, fist to fist? Don't you mean dog to wolf, paw to paw? You gonna let this punk talk to you like that, Ami? Pick a fight? Yes. Ah. You really can't say no to a fight, can you? Let's show what it means to be the true whole digging king. Ka me ha me ha. All right, let's start this battle out proper. I'm going to start off with two I uh, with one item. I'm going to use a steel fist sake so I can finish this guy off quicker than normal and uh, you want to be very careful of Hayabusa. Also, I'm doing a ton of damage. Because he has a, this attack. Also, this d drains all of your ink. So do not fall for this attack. Do not fall into the hole that he creates. It doesn't matter how much you ink you have because it will all be gone. Now, he will turn himself invincible like that. I want to use that opportunity to use an Exorcism Sub S because that will immediately make him weak. And so I can give him a lot of attackage. And let me go and back up. Okay, that will be the hole digging area for you. Just keep your holes over there, and we will be fine. And actually, wow, Steel Fist Sake for the win. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Blow up. Come on. Oh, snap. I lost health there. Well, actually, I didn't lose health. I just lost uh, it, uh, Godhood, and it was actually all for the best because... <laughs> wow. 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 Whoa! That was horrible. Get over here. Get over here. Seriously? Seriously? I missed a power slash twice, and that made it so I lost. Also, I could have just used my my sub-rosary to finish him off. And so I probably took a big hit on time. Actually, not that not too bad. If I hadn't have missed that uh that power slash twice in a row, I probably would have gotten a green rank, but actually that was pretty good. Okay. You got some explaining to do you, doggy. Why are you ignoring the prince's summons to wait for the festival? Also, I should note that Isun's insults are kind of wearing thin, because he just called him doggy. I'm not the real Hayabusa. The real Hayabusa died along with Mushi's father when they were attacked by monsters deep in the forest. I happened to pass by about that time, but I was too late. Right before Hayabusa died, he begged me to protect Mushi. He foretold the coming of an evil arrow from the sky. An arrow that would kill Mushi on the night of the full moon. That is how I came to live here in this village. I've been waiting for the full moon of the festival season. 
Nobody noticed I was not the real Hayabusa, as we are the same breed. The night of the full moon draws near. I shall not move from here. My duty is to fulfill Hayabusa's dying wish. I must protect Mushi. And just like with the other canine warriors, the Saitomi Power Orbs has choose chosen a new owner. Us. Yours truly. You obtained Loyalty Orb. Z. We got a Saitomi Power Orb. Z. Ami. What was all that he said Hayabusa fo foretold? Something or other about an arrow that would kill Mushi? That's not a very happy story for such a festive season. I hope it's not related to that legend about Orochi and the arrow. Hey, Ami. Looks like we found the three Satomi power orbs that the Kanan warriors had. Hmm. I know we promised to bring the dogs back, but... Well, at least we could bring Princess Fusei the power orbs. But I wonder... You think they could handle Crimson Helm over at the Gale Shrine? Only one way to find out. And that is... Bring them to her. Now, I have a good question. Uh, you, if you remember, when we obtained the uh, mermaid coin, Mr. Bamboo had mentioned how mer merchants all over were going to carry them or something like that. Does that mean everyone... Oh, they, it does! It does mean everyone will carry it. Nice! Okay, so I'm just going to warp back. Sweet! Okay, uh, but before I do, I actually want to sell my stuff. So... I can see if I have... Actually, no, let's take Gander. Also, props props for me to say Gander. Oh, man. we Yeah, okay. We have enough. I was just making sure we have enough uh, sellables to be able to buy the Infinity Judge. And we do. So, let me go and buy this Mermaid Coin. And, let's see. Is there one in this village? No, there's not a Mermaid Spring in this village. Wonderful. Okay, let's go here. And then uh, go to the Mermaid Spring. Alright, uh, the Mermaid Spring is up here. I mean, we've warped to it before, but I just feel like doing it again, because it feels so good to be able to warp. Also, it is nighttime. It should not be nighttime. There's no need for it to be nighttime anymore. We're not fighting anyone. Okay. Now, with wonderful music in ears, <laughs> in eardrums, let's go ahead and hop up here, and jump over here, and run over to the Mermaid Spring, and warp. Wonderful world of warp. I don't know why I'm singing. Okay, let's go ahead and warp. And that's it. So let's go ahead and use this. Toss it in. And warp to, let's see, does Kusa Village have one? Not sure. Doesn't appear so. There's Sasa Sanctuary. Taka Pass. Okay, so Taka Pass is the nearest place to Kusa Village that we can warp to. And nice. Also, I really hope you guys could have heard that. That was like the most amazing uh, spitfire of gunfire I've ever heard. <laughs> wow. The the shooting range is really busy right now because it's like pre-hunting season. I'm not even sure if it's like legal for me. Yeah, of course it's legal for me to talk about this. Of course it is. Right to bear arms, right to free speech combined. I mean, I can talk about a shooting range next to my house, bro. Okay, let's go ahead and run up here and go p visit uh, Princess Fusei. A very long run. Very, very long run. Very long run. Running. Running. Seriously, how much farther is this? Okay, we're almost there. And let me go and power slash these. Or one of them. And there's nothing in it. Okay, there's the map transition. Alright. Let's go ahead and go to Princess Fusei. I'm not going to be buying the Infinity Judge for now, since I'm saving that for next episode. So we can see our nice brand new weapon once we get it. Because it is one of my favorite weapons. I hope you guys see the same thing and agree with me. Because it is amazing. Like, any of the weapons we've had thus far cannot hold a candle to the brilliance of the Infinity Judge. I'll show you what I mean next episode. So let's go ahead and run up here. And walk solemnly in. So. Before we start. I just want to explain something real fast. Really quickly. Um, I'm not going to be explaining the full reference, but I would just like to touch upon what the K9 Warriors and Princess Fusei are a reference to. They're not a reference to mythology, which is surprising, but they are instead a reference to a novel written uh, from 14, uh, sorry, not 14, 1814 to 1842 by Hayukate Bakken. And you might wonder, 
1814 to 1842, that's like 28 years. That's what my ma the math in my head says. 28. I believe that's right. And that's a long time, pal. Yeah. Because this novel was, or is, rather, uh, 106 volumes long. Yeah, this is one of the reasons why I'm not going to be explaining this reference right here now, because my summary would, uh, well, summary is a uh, gross over est overestimation of the word, or overuse of the word, because my summary would be much too summarizing to actually explain anything of the story without leaving you guys extremely confused. I remember um, there was a failed take of this episode, actually multiple, where I tried to actually explain this reference. I tried to uh, summarize the story. First of all, it took me 10 to 20 minutes of the video, so I felt like you guys didn't want to be here for 10 or 20 minutes just listening to me talking. I mean, that's what I would dedicate an entire video for, not 10 to 20 minutes of a Let's Play video. So I decided to scrap explaining it. Also, it's not the most kid-friendly story in the world. Uh, it's it's a little bit mature. It, it contains a few mature themes. It's not like super inappropriate, but it's something that I would feel like uh, it would not. It wouldn't even really fit in a teen-rated game. It's not like M-rated, but it's not teen either. So I did. I decided to uh, not read this story. Instead, I'm just going to be li leaving a link in the video description to a page where you can look at a description, a very good summary of the story. It's a actually a very good summary. It's what I was using to summarize stuff, but it's still too long for me to put into one video, so I decided against it. However, what I will do is, um, real quick, touch upon what the names of the canine warriors mean. Each, each one is a reference to Confucianism, no, not Confucianism, Confucianism, which is a set of moral values um, that were kind of adopted by Japan and China. And um, they're written by a Chinese philosopher around uh, 500 BC? Yeah, 500 BC. So, uh, let me go and touch upon these names and their meanings. I just have to get my information out, which will just take a jiffy. Alright, the names of the canine warriors, starting from the top of my list, is... Let me see if I can find these while reading this. Um, we have... Rei, which means honor. We have Shin, which means faith. We have Chi, which means knowledge. We have... Let's see, where is he? Where is he? He's not here. Okay, well, we have Ko, who is Wisdom. We actually don't have him here. Uh, and then we have... Actually, is that Ko? Could be Ko. Yeah, I'm going to say this is Ko, which means Wisdom. Uh, next, we have Te, which means Brotherhood. And then the last three... Yeah, yeah, this, this is definitely Ko. <laughs> I'm still stuck on that. Uh, the, the last three are the ones that we have talked to over the last three episodes. Uh, Three episodes? Yeah, I believe it's been an episode for each canine we're about. Um, and that is Gi, or Take, or rather Take, or Gi, which means duty. Take doesn't mean duty, Gi does. And then we have Ume, or Jin, which means justice. Then we have Hayabusa, or Chu, which means loyalty. And those are the eight attributes of Confucianism. So, I, now that I've, I've kind of had my uh, cultural f explanation for the video, because I, I never feel right unless I'm either having fun <laughs> or explaining something, which kind of sounds me like sounds like a, I like talking down to people, because I like explaining things or just having fun myself. So, yeah, I paint a brilliant picture of myself. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk to Fusei and tell her about the other three canines. Why, it's my favorite wolf and bug. Enough with the bug thing already! I must speak to you about the three remaining canine warriors. I am sensing something different about them. Do you bring no word of their condition or whereabouts? Well, uh, um, about that. We did find the other three, but, uh... You found them? Well, yeah. It's kind of a long story, but I'm afraid they won't be coming back. Instead, they gave us the Satomi Power Orbs. I see. 
Well, I did sense that the Canaan warriors had changed in some way. Maybe they had a fateful encounter during their journey. Perhaps some strong bonds that cannot be broken have been forged. If they are to live apart from the Satomi house, I have but one wish. I would wish them to protect the peace under their new master, for that is the role they are meant to fulfill. And we give her the magical graphical glitch orbs, and now she has all eight. Now she'll turn into a fire-breathing demon monster and attack us. Or not, she's actually a good, a good girl, even though she's a cat. Well, at any rate, all the Satomi power orbs have been returned. Now I can break Crimson Helm's barrier. I must get to the shrine. And here we are. Which is actually very unexpected. Whoa, check it out. The power orbs are spinning around us. How could this be? Have the power orbs accepted you as their new master? Master? What are you talking about, lady? One does not choose to take the orbs. They choose their master. Oh, magnificent power orbs, heirlooms of the Satomi house. Are these whom you have chosen to decide the Satomi house's fate? Also, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It's It sounds like Satomi to me, but I know that A's in, uh, in the Japanese language are always pronounced as A, so it could be uh, Sato Satomi. Which actually sounds much better, Satomi. Yeah, I'm going to start saying Satomi from now on, unless I, I'm told otherwise that it is indeed Satomi, because... I, I don't know. It may be because the name of the story... I, I guess I should tell you guys this. The name of the story that they are... That the, the Satomi house is referencing is Nanzo Satomi Hakenden, which means Legend of the Eight Dog Heroes of the Sa Satomi Clan of Nanzo. Yeah, big translation for three words. Um, so it does tie in uh, Princess Fuse. It does tie in all the dogs. It ties in the... Conf the Confucianism meanings. It even ties in the power, the Satomi power orbs, for goodness sake. You guys should really read this. Now, I do want to warn the younger viewers of my channel, because I do know I have a few, that this is not the, uh, it's not a story that you, that you read every night before bed to help yourself sleep. This is a, also it sounds like I'm being, I'm really patronizing, but, uh, this is a story that is pretty serious. It has some really serious connotations to it so yeah i would ask your parents or have your parents read it before you do just to check yeah just you know i have to i have to say these things so i don't scare the kids you know also i love you kids because you guys are awesome you're like the reason why i have 62 subscribers also it sounds like i'm i'm trying to flatter all my viewers which is not really accepted so i'm going to actually end the video now next time in okami we I do mean we are going to go into the Gale Shrine and unlock the barrier that apparently stands in our, that would stand in our way if we had gone there earlier. And we're going to enter the second dungeon in the game. Also, it's hard to believe that we're all, that we're almost two dungeon. We've only gone in two dungeons, or almost the second dungeon, and we're 22 episodes in. That's really crazy. It shows that this is not just straight up cookie cutter Zelda. So, that out of the way, I release new episodes of Kami Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Saturdays are long episodes, and if you like this episode, leave a comment in the comment section of the video. I really appreciate it. And also, next episode, Dem Infinity Judge, yo. We're gonna be getting it. See you guys next time.